Well, good morning, folks. As we do every few weeks, we're going to be doing another live version, taking things a little bit more slowly so you can see what goes into making the morning news. We're starting at spaceweathernews.com and we're checking out the last 24 hours on our star. Let's get a little bit bigger view here. Dark coronal hole coming into face Earth today. Uh, luckily, this 48-hour view from NASA just goes over and clicks back to the left like a typewriter when the 48 hours is up, so it is a looping view. The bright things you see are the umbral fields of sunspots. These ones are departing. These are ones that gave us all the M flares over here. These ones are fairly good size, but they're departing after having been silent across the Earth-facing disk, leaving really just this uh, incoming. But when we go take a look at the sunspots, we can see that the uh, incoming spots are really, really small, as they have been. Certainly no chance for real magnetic mixing, at least at this point. Uh, certainly nowhere near as large as the departing group on the south, which has also been silent. We can no longer see the group on the north that was making the solar flares. As we come to the, uh, the yellow view, which is 171 angstroms, you can really see the brightness of the sunspot groups, the one departed, the one departing now, and the one crossing the disk. You don't see anything else coming in, so uh, if these decay or if these manage to turn all the way through, we could have another uh, spotless situation in terms of sunspots. Anyway, we go back over to spaceweathernews.com and we can see that indeed solar flaring has been on the decline. It has been on the decline since we had those M-class solar flares and just this morning we are kind of struggling to even get uh, a C-class event. Uh, peaking in on seven days of the solar wind here, uh, so you can see the previous coronal hole stream, how it got up pretty much over 750 kilometers per second as high as 771 kilometers per second but that has come down now and you can see that you know the coronal hole stream that we're experiencing at this point after the density shock really is nothing by comparison which is the reason why we had that brief low level geomagnetic storm and thus far since then we've had nothing but instability let's go ahead to the wind map now take a look at what some of the weather is going to be doing today zooming out a little bit turning on the pressure It's looking like the system is finally moving up towards the northeast now. Let me take a look and put the rain and snow on. Let's also keep an eye on what's happening out west here. Could be another soaker for parts of California. But this is, of course, what has been dropping the tornadoes. Hope everyone is all right. For those who are wondering, Billy did make it through the storm system yesterday very safely. Uh, let's just come through to when I would be speaking to you tomorrow morning. And you can see that uh, is really going to be really crashing up even up into Canada there uh, and we do appear to have another soaker coming for California let's go back down to now bring the pressure back see what's going on in Europe that high pressure right there is going to keep everything clear I'm going to step back out for just a second turn on the rain and snow yeah relatively clear right there we do have it pushing a bit of moisture at the coast of Norway uh, otherwise just some sort of sparse light rain in there. Let me go forward see if anything's going to be a little bit more intense. It doesn't appear to be a sort of a lighter day for Europe. Okay, so we're going to go down under for a moment. Oh, that system really has intensified since we looked at it yesterday. Uh, this line up here, uh, this one is moving east, so this is no concern for these really up here, and I'm not sure if that one's going to be taking a track at land or not. As we mentioned yesterday, there's the New Zealand event uh, really moving off now. We'll pull up the rain and snow just to make sure. Yeah, it's looking like this area is going to be fairly clear as well. We do, of course, have the chance for some of that tropical moisture to drop up here, but it looks like this storm is going to stay away at least for the time being. In terms of the earthquakes the last day, the largest one we had was in Vanuatu. Drop that down a little bit so we can see things. Uh, some of the other interesting earthquakes we had uh, up here at the Adaman Islands of India, one in Guam. Over on the west coast of the United States as that storm approaches, there isn't a ton to be concerned about, nothing even at magnitude 3 level, so nothing that would be considered a foreshock. Let's quickly go over to quakewatch.net, pull up the prediction center. Blot echo wind map, see how everything's going. I'm going to shift this over because I tend to like looking at it uh, like this. That Vanuatu event that we just saw was indeed a blot echo. It was higher than magnitude 4 and more than 100 kilometers down. We had one in Argentina this morning, which 
when I go and update the earthquake risk map, I'm going to have to do something about that because if you might remember, we had a green line there. In fact, I can just pull it up. Uh, this is our earthquake uh, alert risk map uh, as of last night. Uh, really sparse red high alerts, but we do have uh, this area where we were looking for blood echoes, so we're going to have to really look and see if we're going to have to set a high alert there because of that. And I'm going to be checking to see if those earth spots, uh, those low pressure systems are arriving at Japan. And actually, let's go ahead and do that really quick. Let's zoom in here. All right, so you can see this rotation right here. That is the circulation. Over the day today, it's going to really, really strengthen and draw a convergence line pretty much over Japan. So we're going to be keeping an eye on that as well. Uh, last little note, up in the top right of all the pages of QuakeWatch.net, in addition to our first two papers, you can find our next two papers. Uh, just posted them yesterday. Uh, not sure if anybody's had a chance to read them yet, but I'm sure you will now. Anyway, that is uh, what's going on right now. We have not much uh, the last 24 hours in terms of space weather or earthquakes. The earthquake watch does continue as Jupiter is behind the Earth today, the direct alignment between the Sun, Earth, and Jupiter. We call that a heliocentric conjunction because from the Sun's point of view, Earth and Jupiter are aligned, and it's a geocentric opposition of the Sun and Jupiter with them opposed on opposite sides of the Earth. So that's pretty much where we stand right now. We'll be keeping an eye on the weather, on the sun, and on the earthquakes, and we'll see you in the morning. Be safe, everyone.